In this video, we discuss polar coordinates. For polar coordinates, we define the origin as the pole and the x-axis as the initial ray. Each point in polar coordinates is located by assigning to it a polar coordinate pair, r theta, where r is the directed distance from the pole to the point and theta is the angle between the initial ray and the ray made from the origin to the point. So in other words, r is the distance, the straight line distance from the origin to the point, and theta is the angle made with the positive x-axis. Plotting points. On the grid given, graph the following points given in polar coordinates. We have the points 3, 225 degrees, negative 5, 150 degrees, and 4, negative 4 pi over 3 radians. So you can see our polar grid looks like a bunch of circles expanding out from the origin, and then we have these rays marking off our, our angles at 30 degrees, 60 degrees, 90 degrees, and so on. So let's do this first point, 3, 225 degrees. So we know that um, 225 degrees is 180 degrees plus 45 degrees. So that tells me that my point is going to be in the third quadrant, and it's going to be along the um, the angle that bisects the third quadrant. So I'm just going to go ahead and sketch that angle in. And I know that my R is 3, so what I want to do is along that ray at 225 degrees, I want to count out 3 from the origin. So my point will be 3 circles out from the origin, on that 225 degree line. Now the next point, negative 5, 150 degrees, we know that 150 degrees is in the second quadrant, and a negative r, because we have negative 5, negative r reverses the direction that we're going to go from the origin. So we have our 150 degree line, but I'm going to go opposite that direction from the origin and count 5 in the opposite direction. And so I actually end up in quadrant 4 instead of in quadrant 2. So I have my point 5 circles out in quadrant 4 opposite the 150 degree line. Okay, our last point, 4 and negative 4 pi over 3. Here's 0, and there's negative pi over 3, negative 2 pi over 3, negative 3 pi over 3 is the negative x-axis, because that is negative pi, and negative 4 pi over 3. So negative 4 pi over 3 is in the second quadrant. It's equivalent to doing... Um, 120 degrees. So in, in my second quadrant, I'm going to count out 4 along that line, and so I have my point along the negative 4 pi over 3 ray, 4 circles out from the origin. So that's how we plot points in polar. You find your angle, and then you count out are spaces from the origin along the ray at that angle. And if you have a negative r, you go the opposite direction. Now on the same grid, let's graph the polar equation r equals 7. So notice that there is no restriction on theta. We just know that r equals 7. So this is going to be the graph of all possible points that are exactly seven spaces away from the origin. So we actually end up with a circle of radius seven around, um, centered at the origin. So there's our graph of r equals seven. Anytime you have r equals a number, you'll just end up with a circle as your graph. 
Okay, now let's move on to graphing polar regions. We want to graph the set of points whose polar coordinates satisfy the following equations and inequalities. And our first set is 11 pi over 12 is less than or equal to theta, less than or equal to 5 pi over 4. And we also have the condition 0 is less than or equal to r, less than or equal to 4. So let's start with the angles. I know that 11 pi over 12 is slightly less than pi, and so it's going to be in the second quadrant. And so I'll draw my ray with the um, 11 pi over 12. And I know that 5 pi over 4 is pi over 4 more than pi, so that's going to be in the third quadrant, actually bisecting the third quadrant. So I'll draw that ray, 5 pi over 4. And now I know that um, r is between 0 and 4 inclusive. And I know that r equals 4 is a circle of radius 4, so I'm going to go ahead and draw that circle r equals 4 centered at the origin. And I'm only interested in the part of that circle that is between the two angles 11 pi over 12 and 5 pi over 4. So we have the inside of the circle since r is between 0 and 4 and so I would end up shading in that little pi slice that is partially in the second quadrant and partially in the third quadrant so between the angles and inside the circle. Okay now we have one more we want to graph the sets of points um, whose polar coordinates satisfy the following equations and inequalities. And this time we have theta is between negative pi and 0, and r is greater than or equal to 2. So first of all, negative pi I know is my negative x-axis, because if I started at the positive x-axis and went clockwise, pi radians, I would end up on the negative x-axis. And I know 0 is the positive x-axis, so I'm going to have the lower half of the grid. Now r is greater than or equal to 2 tells me that I want the outside of the circle r equals 2, including the boundary because of the or equals 2. And so I'm going to graph my circle r equals 2, and then I'm going to shade in the lower half of the um, graph, I'm going to shade outside of the circle. And if you have a pencil, this is a lot easier to do than with a pen. But basically, everything including the boundary of the circle, and it would actually expand out and down forever, uh, but we are limited to, you know, graphing within our um, within our given grid. Okay, so remember for polar coordinates you always have an r and a theta. r is your distance from the origin, theta is the given angle, and you can use those to plot points and graph regions in polar.